Okay, all right. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I think we've got, um, uh, we're right about seven o'clock. Um, quick announcement before we, before we do begin, uh, we are planning to take questions, questions and answers. If you have any, there will be a Q&A session uh, at the end of our presentation. So save those questions so that we don't miss them, save them for the end, and then just put them in chat when we announce that it's time for the question and answer period of our presentation. Um, to get started, I'll introduce myself. I am the US Chess Assistant Director of Events. Uh, my name is Pete Karyanis, and I, uh, I uh, help do a lot of the uh, background work pre-event, and I will be at the site running the event as well. We have a few um, US Chess personnel on the call who I'll introduce. Uh, first, we have um, our Chief TD, uh, Jeff Weevil. Um, Jeff will be the Chief Tournament Director in Memphis. Uh, second, oh. uh, second, we've got uh, also uh, our Scholastic representative from Memphis, uh, John Rockefeller, on the call. Uh, John will be the representative from the Scholastic Council there in Memphis for the high school championship. Uh, we also have uh, Chief TD of the Elementary in Columbus, Myron Thomas, on the call. And last but certainly not least, uh, we have the president of US Chess, Michael Hoffpower, on the call. And Mike, I believe you'd like to sort of start us off with a few words. Yeah, thank you very much, Pete. And, you know, players, I can't overemphasize the importance of you being able to recognize two faces that are in this meeting tonight. That's Jeff Wewell, who is your chief tournament director, and John Rockefeller, for his, who is the, you know, the scholastic uh, representative from the Scholastic Council who will be going around talking to all of you, you know, parents and players and coaches at the tournament, you know, seeking to get input from you about, you know, how we can do things better in these scholastics tournament. I, I wanted to talk to you for just a moment before I jump over to another meeting tonight about uh, some things in the U.S. Chess scholastic regulations that I think everybody really needs to be aware of because they're a little bit different this year. So I'm going to grab the screen here and do a little bit of share in action. So Pete, tell me when you can see the screen. You got it. Okay. You're, yep, you're good, Mike. Okay, so what you see here is the home page for the tournament. And Pete will talk more about that home page in just a moment. But I did a search and if you type in the word regulation, you can scroll down and find the US Chess Scholastic Regulations. Okay, and I'm gonna click on that. And it brings me to the, you know, the scholastic regulations. And what I want to point out for you, let me go back one, I messed it up. What I want to point out for you is a part that impacts all of you as players uh, for the scholastic regulations. Okay, in section on page eight is a section 12.4.3. This deals with your ratings. And for the Nationals this year, if your online ratings will figure into your section eligibility. So if, you know, if you, for example, in this particular example here, a player has a 1550 established rating and a 1430 established online rating, the 1550 over the board rating is going to get used because it's higher. By comparison, here's another player example, a 1550 established over the board rating, but a 1780 online established rating. And this player is subject to having the higher 1780 rating being used. It's not saying it will be used, but it's going to get flagged and then it will get reviewed by John Rockefeller and Jeff Wewell as well as our director of events who form what is called the ratings oversight of the ratings review group. And then they will make a decision as to whether that higher rating will get used for sectioning purposes. And this has impacts. And I'll show you some examples right here. I'm looking at the K-12 under 1600 section. And here's a player right here who's got a 1317 regular, but a 1681 online. That's going to get flagged because it's more than 200 points higher than the 1317, number one. But then number two, if the ratings review group looks at that rating and that 1681 is considered to be a valid rating, 
that player would then be moved to the next higher section. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen in this case. I'm just using that as an example for you. But if that 1681 is a provisional rating and it's 1317 is a regular rating, the regular rating that's you know an established rating always takes priority over a, a, a provisional rating. It takes priority. So if the 1681 was based on like say 10 games online, but the 1317's well established, then the 1317 would get used in the 200 point difference would not mean anything. But that's, you know, so the, 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 the ratings algorithm that gets used to review p players' ratings would highlight, uh, you know, Jake Schoenbauer from, from Minnesota, it would highlight his for further review. So that's when we take the computer out of it and we put the human in the loop and the humans now look at it and make an assessment as to whether that 1681 rep rating is more representative of that player's strength and should therefore be used for sectioning and pairing purposes, as well as prize eligibility. Okay, uh, but I wanted to get that out of the way so that people can think about that. But you know, the main thing I want to do is because, I, like I said, I have to jump over to a special delegates meeting of all our delegates tonight. Um, I just wanted to wish all of you luck in the tournament. Um, the I've heard the briefing before that. Pete Carianas gives. It's excellent. It has a lot of good information. So I highly encourage you to hold all your questions until the end, because if you type something in the chat, number one, we probably won't see it because we're paying attention to the briefing. But number two, it's probably going to get answered if you listen for a little bit. So, you know, kind of hold those questions, make a note of them and write them down. And um, uh, I hope I can get to the high school nationals. If I do, I like to go you know, go in there and help out in any way I can. But um, wish all of you good luck in the tournament and good luck to Jeff as our chief TD and John as our scholastic coordinator, I mean, our scholastic representative for this event. So hope all of you have a good evening and Pete, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. All right, great. Um, thanks for joining us, Mike. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen now. And as I do that, I'm gonna go through with everybody what to expect tonight, um, give you an idea of what we're gonna talk about. Um, we basically have three things, uh, three main things that we're going to discuss. The first one is using the tournament website. Um, the second one is we're going to actually see the playing hall tonight. Uh, we're going to see uh, where your players, or if you are a player, where you will be playing your games and where everything will be once you arrive in Memphis. So I'm going to show you guys a layout of the convention center and we'll talk about where you need to go, where you need to be, what that looks like. And then the third and final thing uh, that we're going to talk about tonight uh, before we get to our question and answers, we're going to talk about our new player guide. This has a lot of really useful and important information. If you haven't been to a national event before, um, there's a lot of great stuff in there. So we're going to do sort of a light version of that uh, because um, it's, it's particularly useful, has a lot of great info. Uh, but at the high school level, uh, a lot of you players have been here, uh, been here before. It's not your first rodeo, as they say. Um, so we'll do those three things. My target time is about 30 to 40 minutes. We'll see how quickly we can get through it. And then we'll save the remaining time for any questions you may have, which you can put in the chat. So first thing we're going to talk about is using the tournament website. There are a couple of highlights to be aware of in regards to the tournament website that Mike was just showing everyone. Uh, the first one is, if you have registered already and you want to make sure everything looks good, okay, right here at the very top in this side menu, you can check your registration by just hitting advanced entries. This, this will show a list of everyone who's entered into the tournament. Uh, you can search from your state to find yourself. You can search from the first letter of your last name to find yourself. You can search in the section to find yourself. Um, and, and it's very easy to do that. I'll give an example here. If I'm in playing in the under 1200, I can find my name, make sure my section looks right, make sure my grade looks right, make sure my ratings uh, are, are correct, my name and US Chess ID. Uh, this over here is your school code. Uh, if you are playing with a school team, you also wanna make sure that uh, your school code looks correct. Okay? Um, if there are any issues whatsoever with anything in terms of your registration, maybe your name is spelled wrong, maybe you're in the wrong section, whatever it may be, there's a very simple email address to remember. It's marked down here at the bottom. It's national events at uschess.org. I'm going to find that for you just to show you where it is. That should be down here somewhere at the bottom. Um, it's now again, it's just national events at uschess.org. There we go. 
national events at uschess.org. So if you have any issues whatsoever with your registration, whatever it may be, simply email national events at uschess.org and they will get you taken care of. Um, and this goes for all the way up to tournament start time. If your flight lands late Friday morning and you're not gonna make round one, what do you do? Okay, um, national events at uschess.org will get you taken care of. Uh, also on the tournament website, uh, as, as Mike mentioned, um, we have these scholastic regulations, which I strongly encourage you to read through if you have not yet. Um, we'll also update this with hotel uh, information as best we can. Recently, as you can see here, the Sheraton Memphis downtown sold out of rooms. So we did add some overflow information uh, at the Holiday Inn Memphis, and we are working on more. If those become available, we will post it right there. Okay. Um, Masks, this is an important one. Um, we are still going to be enforcing a mask policy. Uh, all public areas for US chess, and I will show you exactly where those public areas are in just a moment, uh, will be required, uh, you will be required to wear a mask while you are in those areas. Um, this policy cannot be waived. And if you have an issue with it, simply uh, stay home, don't attend. Um, we wanna have a nice, safe, uh, fun uh, event for everyone. Uh, masks are still required in the convention center area, and our tournament directors uh, will be enforcing that. Uh, okay, uh, the tournament website has tons of great information, has the round times, has all of the information you need regarding the tournament. Um, and additionally, uh, as mentioned, there's the scholastic regulations. It also has the schedule of events, which I want to draw your attention to right beneath the scholastic regulations. Uh, the schedule of events is very useful because it shows you what is where. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, when I'm at a tournament site, I actually have this open on a tab on my smartphone, so I can refer to it anytime I want. It will show you what event is going on and what room it is going on in. So the Bug House tournament will be played from 11 to 2 p.m. in the East Hall. Um, I always have my smartphone ready to pop this out, zoom in on it, and find the event that I need and where it is. I've seen some parents and players have copies of this printed out. Yes, we will have some on site. This schedule of events will also be in the official tournament program. So if you are playing in the event, you will receive an official tournament program. We always have some extras if you need them. The schedule events can be found there. If you want, it can also be found online. As I said, I just keep a tab open on my smartphone so I can look at it anytime I need to. Um, last thing on the uh, official website that, uh, that is uh, very useful to, to know, again, all the schedules, all the good stuff. If you would like a team room, if you are a team reserving a room, I think we have exactly one team room left. Uh, these team rooms, uh, you, can, you can view the available team rooms that we have. Uh, you can decide if you want one. Um, we do still have one team room left available. So if you are a coach, hey, maybe we had more players than we thought sign up at the last minute. We're going to have a fairly large team. We'd like a space to meet nearby to the tournament. Um, you can reserve a team room there. Uh, okay, let's check out the tournament site. Let's see what it looks like. So the Renaissance Convention Center is connected to the hotel. Um, if you would like, I will go ahead and post this link in chat. You can review the menu. Uh, you can review the venue map yourself. Here's the link. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the two US chess spaces and what is happening in those two US chess spaces. Um, and we're going to start on floor two. So this is actually the second floor of the convention area. Uh, the second floor of the convention area is where you will be most of the time. So when you come to the tournament, this down here, um, if you can see my mouse cursor, is actually a skywalk over to the main hotel. So you can walk directly from the main hotel across to the convention center. Um, the playing hall where our players will play, that will be the East Hall here. Um, the East Hall, as you can see, will be closed off from the West Hall. Right outside of the East Hall will be chess control. Chess control is where you'll go if you have any questions, any problems during the tournament, you need to take a buy, you need to withdraw, something went wrong, where do I go? Chess control. Conveniently at this site, it will be located right outside of the main playing hall, so it's almost impossible to miss. Um, it would be very difficult. <laughs> you, you would have to walk right by it and not see it. Uh, the West Hall, right next to the East Hall, this will be the Skittles area. 
If you are new to tournaments, you're not familiar with uh, Skittles area, this is just a place to go and wait, relax in between rounds, um, play, some, play some practice games if you want, review your game. Um, the Skittles area is open. It's open to anyone. Uh, there will be lots of tables in there you can set up at, you can, you can set up, uh, you know, your team can sit there uh, and, and wait for everybody's round to finish. Um, and it's very close. As you can see, you'll just need to walk out of the East Hall and go into the West Hall. The Skittles area will also have a couple of uh, uh, demos. I think we might also have the Simul in the Skittles area this year. That is, again, on the tournament schedule that I just showed you on the tournament website. Um, and this, this area will have some, some other general goings on besides being a waiting area and a, and a lounge, sort of a lounge area. Um, very important for the players. Uh, if you have a round that just finished and the next round is starting right away, we're going to have some food for you right near the, the tournament. So there will be a food stand in this vicinity over here uh, by the Riverview lobby. Um, so literally right down the hall from the tournament, you can go and grab a snack. Um, in this in this area, you can eat it inside the Skittles room. Um, also in the Riverview lobby, we will have the t-shirt vendor. So if you want to get your tournament t-shirt, you can go there and do that. And uh, I'm very excited to announce we have something uh, new that has uh, that uh, we haven't had in years past. Next to the t-shirt vendor, we will have Chessable on site. So if you parents or um, students are familiar with Chessable, uh, they're going to have a, a demonstration and a display, and I think they have some really fun stuff planned. Uh, I'm not supposed to give anything away, but but from what I've seen, I think they're going to have some really fun stuff planned at their Chessable booth. Um, so that will also be placed in the Riverview lobby, again, right down the row from the tournament hall. Uh, okay, this is floor two. Again, this is main playing area, Skittles area, chess control, food. So you can get a snack in between your games right there close to the event. Um, T-shirt vendor, adjustable. Okay, let's check out floor number one. Okay, level one. I'm going to try to zoom in a bit here so you guys can see this a little better. Uh, again, the hotel is sort of across Main Street. So if you can orient yourself uh, thinking about where the hotel would be, the hotel would be um, down <laughs> on this map across Main Street. Uh, you can come in here on floor one. There are a variety of stairwells to get up to floor two where the playing area is. Uh, this main street lobby will have some information, some displays, that sort of thing. This room here, uh, rooms 102 through 104, will be the bookstore. Uh, so if you're interested, if you need a notation book, if you need you know, whatever it may be, um, you want to you wanna browse their, their wares, uh, the bookstore is located right here. Uh, it's U.S. Chess Sales, Sean Sullivan, excellent, excellent bookstore. I really enjoy popping in there and, and checking stuff out. Uh, if you have a team room, all of the team rooms will be in the remaining area here. So that's rooms 105 through I think 114, um, maybe even 115 are the, are the team rooms. Uh, you can see one of the nice things about the team rooms this year is they are literally right below the playing hall. So you can come out of the playing hall, you can walk down the stairs and you can find your team room. There are a very limited number of them. I think there are only 12 in total, maybe 13. Um, so there are not very many at all. Um, but if you do have a team room reserved, this is where you will be, near the bookstore, near the Main Street lobby, uh, and near Main Street. It's a pretty simple layout for this one. Everything's sort of right on top of its, right on top of uh, itself, and it's very hard to get lost. Um, it's very easy to find your way around the tournament site. Um, okay. Wow, we're making really good time so far. This is awesome. Uh, let's keep moving. So um, this is what it looks like in Memphis. Uh, one last thing before I move on, um, at US Chess events, oh, I'm going to have to shrink this again, um, we have an exit system. So uh, in, in this particular event at the high school, I don't think it will be as much of an issue because we have older players and we have fewer players than the elementary. Uh, but pay attention in case we implement this system, we may implement an exit system where your section leaves out of a certain door. So um, certain sections of players may be leaving out of either the north or the south door. If so, that will be labeled very, very clearly what players should exit through which exit, which door exit. Okay, let's check out our new to nationals guide. This is a great guide that our, uh, our communications department put together. If you've never been to a national uh, event before, um, if you've never gone or, or seen one, um, I really strongly encourage you to browse through this guide. 
Tonight, I'm going to hit on a couple of the, the important things, a couple of the highlights, um, and go through those with you. But we're not going to get we're not going to go through everything. We're not going to go super in depth. As you can see, it is it is a pretty lengthy guide. It covers a lot of things, um, and I really encourage you to take a little bit of time and just peruse it. Um, first things first. Um, at our events, uh, if you've played in a local event, this may be different for you. If you've played in a local tournament, um, but at our events, the playing hall is closed. Okay, what does that mean? That means that the only persons allowed in the playing hall are the players themselves while their game is in progress and tournament staff. Tournament staff is very easy to identify. You can identify them in two ways. Number one, our senior staff like myself, we will be wearing a badge like this. That's why I've brought this badge as a visual aid. It's got a nice little US chess logo here, has an identifier of their name. We will be badged. So the only people in the playing hall while the games are in progress are people with a badge or players, and that's it. Players, when your game is over, you must leave the playing hall. You cannot linger around and go watch your friend's game while they finish your teammate's game. Um, you have to leave the playing hall. This is very simply for the benefit of the players. We want the players to be able to concentrate. We want them to have the best possible environment that we can offer them. So the playing hall is closed. At the start of each round, you will hear Jeff, who is on the call, get on the microphone at the front of the East Hall. And he will say, parents and friends, please leave the playing hall. What does that mean? That means parents and friends, please leave the playing hall. <laughs> that, that means right now. It doesn't mean stick around for one last photo or hang out. We would like to get the round started on time. We would like to get the players going. We want them to have a good experience and stick to the schedule as best as we can. So when you hear Jeff pop on that microphone and ask everybody to leave, please leave so we can start. Um, once the games are over and in between rounds, whenever there are no active games going, you can go in there and check it out, no problem. But the playing hall is closed during games. Only players and badge personnel are allowed in there. Chess control. This is where you take any problems or questions. They have this awesome sign that they carry around with them, so they're easy to find. They pop it up. It says chess control. If you need to withdraw, if you need to change sections, if you have a last second entry, if you have a problem of any kind, whatever it may be, start at chess control. Even if they can't answer your problem directly, they will know who to send you to. So start at chess control. Again, I'm just going to show you chess control will be right here. Here's the playing hall. Here's chess control. Okay. Very, very easy to find at this event. But if you have any difficulty finding them, they do have this cool banner. Just look for that. They're very friendly. Ask them whatever you need, and they will be more than happy to help you out, whatever the case may be. Tournament program, I already mentioned. Um, you can, you can, uh, everyone will receive one of these. We do have a few extras. You can download it from our tournament website. That's this link here. I'll put this in the chat too, just in case you don't have it. You can download it from our tournament website in advance in the event that you would like to, um, but will also be available on site, printed off for you. A very important thing here, cell phones and other devices uh, are simply prohibited. Um, I recognize that uh, if you have a team or you have your parents with you, you may need to take your cell phone into the playing hall so that after your game is over, you can communicate and find your parent. Makes sense, or your team, or your friend, or whatever it may be. While you're in the playing hall, cell phones must be off, not silenced, not on vibrate. They must be off and placed inside of a bag. Okay, the phone should not be used during an active game. Um, if you are having an emergency, a, med a medical emergency or whatever it may be, very well. I mean, if you have to use it, you have to use it. But as it says here, it must be used with a TD present for the entire usage of the phone. Okay. Um, if you are caught with a phone on during a game, you can be forfeited or uh, it's at the, the tournament director's discretion, depending on the, the infraction, you may lose half the time remaining on your clock. Okay, this is a very serious policy. This is a fair play policy. This applies to all electronic devices, not just cell phones. If it's a tablet, if it's a smartwatch, we've had students just completely forget that they have a smartwatch on, right? Because it's on your wrist, it's just like a watch. Who cares? Don't forget guys, this is a serious matter. Any smart device, any electronic device, 
must be off, must be not on your person, must be placed in a bag. If you accidentally have it on your person and you leave to use the restroom and you're found out to have the phone on your person while you left the playing hall to use the restroom, you're getting forfeited. You're losing that game. So just make it easy on yourself. Um, keep it in the bag, okay? Um, okay, moving along. The round schedule is on the website. Don't need to touch on that too much. You know, here's an example of the playing hall. This, is, this was uh, 2018, I think. This was actually the last year where we allowed spectators in. And as you can see, the spectators were up here on the uh, viewing balcony. They were not allowed on the actual main floor uh, since the playing hall has been closed. So if you were to see a playing hall today, it would not look like this. There would be no spectators up there. Um, and uh, only the players and the tournament directors would be in the room. Okay. The so later the rounds in that tournament had no spectators. That's right. That was the event actually where, <laughs> which, which created the, um, the decision to close the playing hall internally. Um, okay, these are very important results slips. Very, very important. Okay, every game of every round of every player must have a result slip when it is completed. A result slip simply tells us what happened in the game. You put your name, your opponent puts their name. Do not circle a result or sign the paper until the game has completed. We've had people uh, sign it and, <laughs> and then somebody circles the wrong result and there's, there's a problem, okay? So just fill out your result slip, but do not circle the result or sign it until the game has actually been completed. Both players have to sign the result slip. You have to have an agreement on the result before they leave the playing hall. Um, so it is very important to fill out your result slip. These will be on your board at the start of every game. And if that slip is messed up, the TD will likely give you a new one to fill out correctly. Right. If you wrote your name on the wrong side and you crossed it out or erased it or whatever, you're going to do it over again because we want them to be clean and clear and no question that this result slip was accurate and not altered in any way. Um, which brings up a broader point, uh, which is a very, very critical and important point. As a former chess coach, Myself, I cannot tell you how many times I had a kid come, one of my players come and tell me after the game, oh, this and this happened and uh, you know, it's unfair and, and I have a problem. And I, and I told every single one of them the same thing. I'm sorry that happened. It's too late. If you have a problem during your game, whatever it may be, oh, you know, that kid touched the piece and, and he has to move it or, um, you know, it, it should have been my turn, but it was his turn or the clock malfunctioned or whatever the problem is. Very simple, raise your hand and wait for a director, okay? A director will come and help you. They will address the problem. If you're waiting and time is ticking away, you are perfectly within your rights to pause the clock, raise your hand and call a director. If the other player restarts your clock because you paused it, don't get into a slam fest with them. Just wait for the director to come over. Tell them what happened. I have an issue. I have a problem. He restarted my clock when I tried to pause it. Can I have the time back? The directors will almost certainly give you the time back. Okay? So if you have a problem during a game, don't wait until the game is over. Don't wait until it's too late. Raise your hand when the problem occurs. The director will come find you and help you. And I'll show you what the directors look like. We have that coming up in this um, new player's guide. <laughs> notation. Everybody at this event is required to take notation. Um, we do waive the requirement for young players in the elementary, um, but we're, we're flexible with it anyway for young players in the elementary. But in the high school championship, everyone in this event is required to take notation. You must notate your games. We will provide notation sheets for you. And those are the only notation sheets that you are allowed to use during the event inside the playing hall. You cannot bring in a notation book from before the event, from another tournament. You have to use the notation sheets we provide for you. That's it. Um, those again will also be provided to you at the beginning of every round. Wall charts, uh, if you wanna find your result, again, I encourage you guys, if you're new to tournaments, read through this read through how it works, how you can see the result, how you can see who won against who, what that all means. Same with the Swiss system pairings. If you are new and you're unfamiliar with how chess tournaments are paired, this is all in the new player guide. Go check it out. Um, food and drinks. This is a little different because of COVID. Um, so we are not currently allowing food and drinks in the playing hall. 
Um, if you have a special need, uh, if you are a diabetic or you, you need a, a particular, um, if you have a medical need regarding uh, food or drink coming into the playing hall, exceptions can be made. You need to contact us in advance to make sure that we can accommodate you. Um, again, the contact email, nationalevents at usjust.org. I'll put that in the chat too. It's just nationalevents at usjust.org. So give me a second to type that. Nationalevents at usjust.org. Okay. All right. Moving along. Uh, award ceremony. We'll try to do these as, as quickly as we can. Uh, the award ceremony, we want everyone who won an award to have the opportunity to get it, but we also understand people need to get back home. Monday is a school day. You need to go catch a flight. So we will do our best to accommodate everyone in the award ceremony. Um, you can, if you would like to, uh, if you have a flight you need to go catch, you can sign up for early trophy pickup. Again, you do that at Chess Control, and we will do our best to get that to you as fast as we possibly can. So you can go and reach your flight or go and get home and get ready for school the next day, whatever it might be. Side events. Again, I encourage you to read about these if you're unfamiliar with them. Uh, we have both a Blitz and a Bug House side event at this tournament, uh, as long as some other really fun stuff. We have a simul with Grandmaster Ben Feingold. He's a very funny, humorous, and entertaining Twitch streamer. Um, we also have a friends and family tournament, where if you're not playing in the tournament, but you're a friend of one of the players or a family member of one of the players, you can play some rated chess too, if you want. And we have an all comers blitz with Grandmaster Feingold as well. Again, all of the side event information is on the tournament website, which I've already linked in the chat. The schedule shows where and when to go to play on the side events. Uh, team rooms we've covered. Again, if you're interested, check them out. Skittles room we've talked about. Hey, we did it. That might be a record in terms of speed getting through it. We're at the end. Um, okay. We've covered a lot of topics. However, I fully understand that you may be on this call because you have some questions. So um, both myself, as well as our chief TD, uh, Jeff Wewell and our scholastic representative, John Rockefeller are here to answer any questions you might have. The way that I'd like to do it to sort of keep this as straightforward as we can and as simple as we can is please go ahead and put them in the chat and we will respond to questions in the chat. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and um, bring us back up here towards the top. So you can see the new player guide. Go check it out. It's great. Are all the times in Eastern time? Um, that's a good question, Evan. I believe that it's based on where the tournament is. So since this tournament is in the Eastern time zone, the answer to your question is yes. Akshar Patel, how do I look for pairings online? Great question, Akshar. So let's talk about that. Uh, when the tournament is live, so when we are in Memphis and the pairings are going online, you will be able to see them up here. There will be a link that says results and pairings, okay? So instead of saying register online, that will disappear and it will say results and pairings. You click that and it will show you your pairings online. Great question, Akshar. Um, thank you for, for, for catching that. That was something we should have talked about. Tournament website will have results and pairings online up in this menu uh, when the tournament goes live. You can click on that and you can, you can actually just see them. Hey Pete, you may want to double check the time zone. Memphis is in Central. Memphis is Central? Okay, I'm sorry. Let's, let's check. It should be in the time zone of the tournament. Yes. So if Memphis is in Central, then these times are all in Central time. Okay. My bad. Part of Tennessee is in Eastern, right? I'm not losing my mind, am I? Yeah, it's split down the middle. Okay, all right. Okay, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you for checking me on that one. All tournaments are in, uh, all, excuse me, all times listed are in the time zone of the tournament city. So if Memphis is in central, which Jeff has corrected me on, then time zones are in central. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, any other questions? Um, I said it was in first grade using the score sheet. How does notation work for moves such as promoting a pawn? Okay. Uh, Clay Casey, great question about notation. There's actually a notation primer. Let me find it that I strongly am going to encourage you to go and read, okay? So let me pull up our notation sheet here, okay? Um, right here, you see in the new player guide, click here for a primer on notation. Um, that will answer your question and many more that you, that you may not have even thought of that you, that you need to know. Um, so I strongly encourage you, if you have any questions regarding notation, um, check out this primer. It covers pretty much everything. It's very comprehensive. It's very helpful. It's very beneficial. Um, 
and you can just click right here on, on the new player guide. I will go ahead and put the new player guide direct link in chat for you, Casey, so you can access it directly. Let's put this to everyone. There you go. If you click on that, you can see our new player guide. And there's a link within the new player guide to check out a primer on notation. It'll give you a lot of great tips, a lot of important stuff. OK. If a player has played a tournament recently and has a new rating a few days before the tournament, will the player's rating be adjusted to fit it? No. OK, so this is a great question, Linda. The tournament that we are playing in, the National High School, will be using the March rating supplement from US Chess. The March rating supplement is a monthly rating. US Chess publishes a monthly rating for all players. The March rating supplement is published as of, I believe, today. So it gets published on the, on the third Wednesday, which actually was today the third Wednesday or was last week the third Wednesday? Uh, it, it's the published on week. the last week. Okay, so it was last Wednesday it was published. So the March rating supplement is already out. Any games played between the publication of the March rating supplement and the tournament will not factor into your rating for sectioning purposes. Um, I, I believe there may be some extreme cases where if a player gains like 600 points, you know, in like, in like five tournaments, they might be considered for a section move, but I don't even think I've ever seen that happen. Um, so, uh, Linda, to answer your question, um, as long as their tournament is played after the March rating supplement, it will not have an impact on their rating for sectioning. I had a, I had a parent email me just this week saying, we're playing in a tournament on April 2nd. Can, you know, is that going to count towards our thing? Do we need to worry about that? The answer is no. Uh, if, if you're playing in April 2nd, that's ap after the March rating supplement. So won't have any impact. When will teams receive confirmation of their team rooms? Great question. Um, okay. So um, Mr. Motley or Miss, Miss Motley, B. Motley, uh, to answer your question, um, the team rooms have been assigned. I actually completed the assignments myself just this afternoon. Um, so those should be sent out no later than tomorrow. In that email, there will be a, a, a contact information uh, for who to contact to arrange snacks and meals uh, during the tournament. You are correct in assuming that no outside food is allowed. So I will, I will read the question. When teams receive confirmation of their team rooms, who do we contact? Oh, sorry, when will teams receive confirmation of their team rooms? And who do we contact to arrange snacks and meals, assuming no outside food is allowed? That's correct. Uh, if you are in the in the hotel, uh, you can go outside the hotel and get food, but they don't allow catering in the Renaissance Convention space. Um, so you'll need to to contact uh, um, the hotel contact that I will give you uh, when the team room is assigned. You'll get an email from me that says, "Congratulations, here's your team room assignment. Here's your room number. If you need anything, contact this person at the convention center or hotel." And those should go out tomorrow. I anticipate them going out tomorrow. Getting back to the supplements. Uh, the March supplement actually came out in late, late February. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's my bad. The, yeah, the yeah. April supplement came out last week. Right. The supplements are published uh, the month before. So the third Wednesday of every month, they publish the next month's supplement. So the third Wednesday of March, we actually published the April supplement. So we are well past the cutoff. Um, we're well past the cutoff there. Any more questions? Is there any, any more uh, questions or issues or concerns that you guys have? Again, if you have any problems at all, um, national events at uschess.org. I put that in the chat. Okay, here's another question. Is a clock the only item required to be brought to the tournament? If you have clocks, please bring them. We ask that you bring them. We do have like one or two extra spares, but not very many. So yes, bring your clocks. Um, in addition to that, we will have notation sheets and something to write with provided for you. So yeah, really a clock is about the only thing. I do encourage you um, to, to go ahead and bring your own chess equipment. So if you want to practice or play or review your game in between rounds, you have a way to do that. You cannot take the boards and pieces out of the playing hall. They have to stay in there. And as we know, the playing hall is closed, so you can't use them during the game or in between games. Um, so yeah, the clock is really the only item that we ask you to bring. but it's probably a good idea to go ahead and bring, um, you know, your own your own set in pieces in case you want to practice or review or whatever it may be uh, in between games. Will this recording be made available on the event website? Yes, this is going to be recorded. We are going to put it up. Um, again, I would expect that to happen uh, fairly quickly as well. So if you need to rewatch it, um, it will be available there. 
everything we've talked about today, uh, you can find um, on the website. Pretty much the only thing that you cannot find uh, on our tournament website that we discussed today is this link, which shows the, the venue map and the location of everything. Um, I did put that in the chat for you. Uh, so if you would like to go ahead and scope out the venue, feel free to do that. There's the venue. Okay. If you do have any more questions, feel free to get them in there. Um, Jeff, John, did either of you have any closing thoughts before we uh, say goodnight to our players here? Seeing a no from John. Uh, biggest thing to always emphasize is that uh, if there's any issue during the game, uh, raise your hand and bring a TD over immediately. And past experience has shown that almost every issue boils down to confusion. A few can be more serious, but most of them are simply confusion. And once the TD resolves it, everything goes forward fine. Right. I don't know if we can see any TDs in this. TDs are very easy to spot when you're on site. All tournament directors will be wearing a colored vest. It will be a red or a green vest, and it's very easy to identify them on site. I'm not seeing any in this in this large picture here, um, but all directors will be wearing a red or green vest, and they're super easy to spot. Here's one actually over here. It's very hard to see, but you can see the red vest. He's got his little white logo there and, and his uh, lanyard as well. Um, can only one student from a high school attend this event? Yes, this is both an individual and a team event. So if you're the only player from your high school who wants to come, that's fine. You can play as an individual and you can win individual awards. Absolutely. You do not need a team to participate. If you have a team, great, but it's not required. Good question, Santor. Okay, any other questions? Otherwise, we will wrap it there. Um, I'll, give, I'll give it another minute in case someone is furiously typing and wants to make sure we see it. But um, thank you, everyone, uh, for attending. Um, we've covered everything we needed to tonight. Again, please check the links in the chat. Uh, go, go scope them out. Uh, review them. Read the new player guide. If you need the notation primer, read the notation primer. Um, so please, please do that. Provisional ratings may be considered, Santa. That's a good question. Um, provisional ratings may be considered if they are, if they again, they would have to have occurred. You would have to have achieved that prior to the rating supplement cutoff. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I, I hope you found this both uh, helpful and informative. Um, I will look forward to seeing everyone in Memphis. Uh, if you do have any other questions or concerns in the meantime, uh, feel free to send them to national events at usjust.org. Um, Jeff, thanks for coming. Myron, John, thanks for being here. I look forward to seeing all of you guys in Tennessee.